Hello. Good evening, everybody. Uh, good day. And then I go. I'm recording. And welcome to the last quarter of our research training for 2022. I'll be your moderator for today. My name is Jerome Victor Joshua. <clears throat> the medical student from Mama Dubedo University, Zaria. I'm a member of the project admitting team for Sukuma Farm Thank you very much. And our, our guest speaker is ready, present. Mr. Yusuf ADBC, thank you very much for honoring our invitation. Thank you very much. Thank you everyone for coming. Uh, you are welcome. So the number, we have 20 people present right now. So can we give them like two minutes to reach 30? Or they are about then we we'll start. Oh, hello, Tony, are you US?
good evening everyone and welcome back again to um today's lesson the, the beginning of the fourth quarter of our research training i am going to be the moderator today and my name is Dr. joshua a third year medical student from amadi university and i'm a member of the project coordinating team for amsa school march 2022 so today's event, today's session is going to be about abstract writing and oral presentation as conferences. So I welcome you all and I give, and I'm grateful for you being here. And our hosts, our guests, thank you very much for honoring our invitation. We're going to the session properly. I would like to give the floor to our the chairperson of Famsa School Martin State, the person of Mr. Abu Ahmed, the YMU Babatun. The floor is yours, sir. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, sir, I can. All right, thank you very much. Um, welcome us. Uh, welcome us. <laughs> I welcome uh, all of us again to this session, and I would like to um, see our chat if we are following the response with yes. So this is the last um, weekend, so we've actually come so far. Out of nine, we've done um, we've done six, we will be seventh uh, session. And then we have our uh, able um, former system, Yusuf ADBC, who has uh, published over 100 um, research papers. He published over 50 research papers while he was an undergraduate, so he knows them. Um, stuff <laughs> and he has attended a lot of conferences so that's why he asked him to talk about them um, outright abstracts and they get um presentation in conferences and get scholarship to travel around the world based on research as a student so i hope we try to remind our friends that we've been attending the sessions together so they join and then they don't get to miss this although they'll be recording but it's better to be at the live session so we're starting now with them um, so Victor, you can continue. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Um, before we move on, before I call our, our guest, the person of pharmacist, Yusuf Adibayo Adibisi, I would like to read, read his citation. So Yusuf Adibayo Adibisi is the Director of Research and Thought Leadership at Global Health Focus and Initiative that builds critical thinkers and leaders in the global health is an public health issues and a youth editorial board member at the Wiley's Journal of Public Health Challenges. Yusuf has published over 110 papers in many international peer review journals and seven book chapters on various global public health issues. Yusuf is also a recipient of many international grants, including but not limited to RSTFH grants and the Kevin Mullow Fellowship. He worked in Advancing Science and Research in Africa. His work in Advancing Science and Research in Africa has been recognized with the Princess Diana Award. He is committed to engaging in impactful large scale population health research that will inspire changes, foster health equity, and improve the quality and quantity of life of people in Africa and beyond. So, ladies and gentlemen, from all that as you can see, he's someone that knows his stuff. And is very experienced, so I would advise you to please pay attention. Just invite your friends as our as our chat person has already said, and please ask questions and give him your attention. Thank you very much. Um, I'm you to floor is yours now. Thank you
Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can, sir. Oh, okay. Sorry, as natural glitches. Um, good evening, good afternoon, uh, everyone. I'm super excited to be here to be sharing my idea regarding abstract writing and um, presentation in conferences, especially oral presentations. So, um, okay. Please, can you hear me? Is it clear? Yes, yes sir, it's clear. Yes, sir. Oh, okay. So, my name is Yusuf Adibayo Adibisi. I'm a recent pharmacy graduate. Uh, I'm also the director for research and thought leadership at Global Health Focus. So, uh, I'll be talking briefly about what abstract is, um, presentation in conferences, and what are the things that you need to know uh, when it comes to uh, writing abstract. Next slide, please. Next slide. So uh, to start with, I know you've learned a lot of things about you doing research, the importance of research, how to design uh, research studies. And another thing you need to know is that you need to actually have that opportunity for you to uh, always present your research in conferences. And what are the things that you need to, uh, you need to really know when it comes to abstract writing? Remember, you can only write an abstract when you have done a research. If you've not done a research or you've not done a study, of course, you won't be able to write an abstract. Abstract is the last thing that we do whenever we are writing a paper. You need to have done something that you are trying to summarize. So what's an abstract? Abstract is a stand-alone writer that summarizes, that gives a summary of your research. Look at what, what the keyword there. The keyword is stand alone. And your abstract must be able to uh, stand alone in such a way that if anybody reads your abstract, they can have an insight on what you have done and um, some of your findings. So when you are writing an abstract, it's very important to put that at the back of your mind. Is a stand alone, short, short, short summary of your research work. It's just an overview of the whole research that you have done. So you must be able to give us a concise overview of what you have done and it must be what stand it must have the ability to stand alone it doesn't have to rest on another thing you don't have to start refining to another thing basically you must be able to give your summary within 200 to 300 words so why do we write abstract what's the relevance of doing abstract abstract is really very important to transmit new information like for instance if you have done a beautiful research and you've not had time or there's no opportunity for you to uh, actually submit that research for, to, to a conference for presentation. Uh, submit it to a journal. You can decide to submit it to maybe a conference just to present, to present what you have done. And over time, you have seen many people winning scholarship, getting uh, a travel grant to be able to present their research. It's as important as that. And one important thing about abstract writing is that it provides the opportunity for you to be able to get feedback about the work that you have done and you can improve on it, then that will also help you when you're developing the manuscript. So it's also very important for career development. Of course, you have the opportunity to be able to travel to conferences, to be able to meet experts in your field, and also to, uh, to be able to learn. And of course, the more you present in your field, the more people tend to know you and what you do. So it's very important as young people to try as much as possible to make sure that way if you see conference around us, you can just start to do maybe a short survey or maybe a questionnaire-based study or just an interview or a review. Then get it submitted to those conferences. Who knows? You can get the opportunity to win a travel grant. You have the opportunity to also uh, broaden your horizon and also to learn how to actually uh, uh, present in conferences. Because everything we're going to uh, discuss here, we just give you an insight. And of course, the practice uh, also needs to be made. So. I don't have those information here, but I'll just go over them. Generally, we have two types of abstracts based on the way they look, based on their appearance. We have a st structured abstract and unstructured abstract. That's just the general uh, type of abstract that we have. For the structured abstracts, 
you are going to see something like different headings, like method, uh, introduction, method, result, conclusion. I know you have been seeing that a lot. When you read a research paper, you will see the abstract, you see something like the introduction, uh, the method or background, introduction, uh, introduction or background, method, conclusion, uh, and result. You see them following the order of, um, of what is actually made by the conferences. So it is very important that you actually understand that some conferences we want you to submit a structured abstract. While some other conferences we don't want you to submit an structured abstract, we want you to submit maybe uh, an unstructured abstract. So the difference between the two, sorry, I don't have it on my slide. The difference between the two is that if you see a structured abstract, you're going to see those headings, those sections, those distinct sections, such as what? You see the background, you see the background, we see the method, we see the result, and you see the conclusion. That's a structured abstract. But for an unstructured abstract, what are you going to see? We're going to see everything written together. But actually, if you, if you divide those uh, uh, the abstract, the unstructured abstract into sections, you'll be able to pick out the results, the conclusion, the method, uh, and introduction. So when you are writing an abstract, one thing that is very important is that you need to follow the guideline that is actually uh, released by the conference or the scientific guideline where you want to submit your abstract to. It's very important to follow the gu guidelines. Some conference will want to submit a structured abstract. Some we want to submit or structured. But don't I, I don't, don't don't take it for don't don't take any anything for granted by just assuming that they, they wanted to use structured abstract. They want to use they don't want to use uh, they want to use unstructured abstract. Uh, can we please move that person? Hello, sir. Hello. Can you hear me, please? Yes, sir, we can hear you. Yes. So I'm saying it is very important. The first thing when you see a conference that actually there is maybe a call for abstract, the first thing you have to do is to read the guide. Don't assume that you know what they want from you. Read the guide to know the kind of approach, the kind of uh, method, or the kind of uh, uh, structures that they want from you. Some conferences, they will call their introduction uh, background, why some we call the result findings. So read it, they will always tell you. Of course, if they don't tell you, then you cannot use the, uh, the general method that we know, which is what? The introduction, uh, method, um, results, and what? Uh, uh, and conclusion. If they don't give you what you, but most conference will actually give you an overview of how you should submit your, uh, what they want from you and the kind of areas that they are interested in. If you are submitting, let's say, uh, uh, this is an HIV, maybe it's, it's, it's uh, a particular conference on mental health, and you are submitting research on HIV, and it's not in a way related to mental health, of course, you're going to have rejection. It is very important that you read the guidelines released by the conference before you prepare any abstract. Then I will give you an uh, insight on the kind of research that they want from you, and uh, of course, then you can prepare it. Remember, we have to type of an abstract. You will have seen that a lot when you are reading papers. You can either see a structured abstract or an unstructured uh, abstract. This next slide, please. So one thing that you have to also know is that when you are writing research abstracts, uh, especially for conferences, make sure that you are not answering uh, many, you don't have many research questions that you are trying to answer. It's really very good if you can actually answer maybe one research question per one abstract that you are submitting. Don't say you want to aim to find the uh, knowledge, attitude, risk factors, just model of many things together. It is very good. And the best research topic that you can ever have is any research topic that is concise, straightforward, and clear. It is very important that you make, you make your abstract is straight uh, to the point. And the one reason why you have to do that is that you know that 
the abstract is usually uh you have world limits usually very short maybe so general will tell you or some conferences will tell you 200 words some will tell you 300 words some will tell you uh, uh 500 words some will tell you 400 it depends on the conference that's why i said the first thing you have to do before you make an attempt to write any abstract or prepare an answer for a conference is to read the guide of course to know how you will structure your abstract for the conference remember when you are writing an abstract is you usually have the without word limit some conferences will not even allow you to go beyond that word limit some will say 300 words some will say 400 words why some will tell you that they just want uh, uh 150 so it's very important that you actually nail a particular research question make sure it is clear concise focused and relevant to that conference it is very important so and also the goal is that it's not just about you just submitting to a conference to a conference one thing that you have at the back of your mind is that after you've presented in the conference also make effort to get your paper published to get the abstract published like write the full paper remember abstract is just a summary of the work that you have done it's just an overview of that beautiful research that you have in your mind it's not the full paper yet it's only 3,000, 5,000 words. It's just 300, 200, 150, depending on the journal. So, but make, uh, uh, make, make take that effort to make sure that you actually try, actually able to get that abstract that you've done published in a conference. Because in the conference, you're going to get feedback on how you can improve your work. And at the same time, you're able to share your work to the scientific gathering, to the scientific community. So it is very important as young researcher that we make our effort from time to time to identify conferences in our area of interest and we submit the abstract to them. But don't let it end there. Abstract doesn't count when it comes to really um, in academics, really, though it's good for your feasibility. Always make effort to publish the full paper. Remember, abstract is just a summary, maybe 150, 200 of, of, the, of your research. So after you've presented in the conference, make effort to uh, try as much as possible to publish it in a peer review journal. Next slide, please. So why do you have some abstracts? Why do you have some abstracts? Um, uh, why do you have them directed by conferences? One of the reasons why the abstract can be actually be rejected is that if it's dull, the topic is very dull and it's adding nothing new to knowledge. So make sure that when you are writing an abstract, you uh, make your the title of your research to be attractive, so make sure that it is um, really interesting. That if you yourself, you actually see something like that, you really want to read, you really want to uh, listen to someone, present that in a conference. Because conference is more about you sharing your science. Because you're sharing science doesn't mean that you should make it boring. So it is very important that you make efforts to make sure that you are able to use a very uh, enticing topic, interesting topic, and also make sure that anything you're submitted to a conference is adding something new. It's not just about repeating uh, something that is not really adding value to the conference. Make sure that anything that you want to submit as an abstract to a conference must be interesting, the topic must be interesting, and must be adding uh, a whole lot of information to the body of knowledge. No matter how simple your aim is, is it adding something to knowledge? Ask yourself that question. Are you able to actually present your abstract in the right way? So of course, when you're also writing an abstract, you must be able to provide context. What is the context of what you are talking about? That means that you have to always do that in your introduction or the background. So at least give us an overview of what is known. In a short word, let's say you're writing on something on maybe antimicrobial resistance. You should be able to tell us that, okay, antimicrobial resistance is a global public health problem that actually arises by doing this and this and this and this. You must be able to give us an overview of the, anything you are doing, you must be able to give us a background or a context of anything you are doing. So if you see for an abstract, if you check, if you look at the introduction of an abstract or the background, some journal will call, some conference will call it background, some will call it introduction. So you must be able to give us the context, what is the background of the anything that you are trying to do. Give us an overview of what is known and where you are taking us to. So usually the last sentence in your introduction or background should always be your aim should be the aim of your of, the, of anything you are writing about. Maybe the aim is to assess this and this and this and this. The aim is to evaluate this, this and this and this. Like you must be able to give us what are you even doing? 
And you always have that in the introduction. Remember, you have word limits. You need to be really concise. Give us the background information, maybe in one line, and tell us the exact aim, where, we are, where you are taking us to, what you want to do with this, uh, or what you have done with your research. So it is very important that you actually make it clear, the aim of your study. And if you look at an uh, abstract, always be careful to check the introduction. If you check the introduction, you're going to see maybe a brief line explaining exactly what is known, what is the background information. And also you will see a sentence telling us the aim of the study or the aim of this research is to do this, this, and this, and this. Because if you don't tell us the exact aim of what anything you are doing, of course, what you are doing is not clear. You just submit an abstract to a conference, you don't tell us the exact aim of the research that you've conducted. I remember when you are developing aim for research, remember it needs to be concise, clear, and also straightforward. Don't make your uh, abstract to be uh, uh, the aim to be complex because remember you don't have uh, a that luxury of words to be able to um, do a lot. I'll be able to write a lot regarding that abstract that you're presenting in the conference. Make sure that your aim is clear and focused. So that when you are writing your introduction, you'll be able to tell us in one line, the aim of our study is to assess this, this, this. Don't give us too many information. It's just needs to be very clear. Remember, you have word limits that you are uh, trying to uh, prevent yourself from going uh, above such word limits. So it is very important that you provide us the context, the background of what you are doing, and also you tell us the aim. You will always find this in the introduction or the background section. Remember, introduction, background, um, it depends on the journal. Some will tell you, or depends on the conference. Some will tell you it is um, uh, they want background. Some will tell you it is introduction. At times, another thing that you have to know, that's why I, I, I mentioned that you always need to check the guide to know how you want to structure your abstract. So we, we, we use this format. Then we mention something like, introduction and aim or some some comments we use context aim method result conclusion it depends on the conference so don't just jump to write an abstract without checking the guides it is very important so that will give you an idea of how they want you to format any abstract you have submitted to them instead of having introduction some conference will tell you that they want it as context context aim of the study separate but it is or you see uh follow if all everything is follow the same idea of giving us what a concise summary of your beautiful research of what you have done. Give us a short, short summary of your research. It's just an overview. And remember, an abstract should be able to stand alone. If you are telling us that the aim of your study is to do this, I must be able to find that your aim answered in the result section. I should be looking at this mention mentioned that the aim of the study is to do this and this. And in the results section, I'm not finding any information like that. You should not, they don't write abstracts like that. Everything must balance. So after your introduction, the next thing you have to do is that it is very, also very important um, that you actually use um, uh, sample size that will actually give you a very good answer. Don't just survey two people or three people and say a conference will be interested for you to give an oral presentation or to be able to present in their conference. Make sure that you are able to use a sufficient sample size. Don't just use uh, two people or three people interview them. No, make sure that you actually put your heart, you do the normal research. Don't an abstract doesn't mean that you, you are not following the due process of doing research. Remember, research abstract is what followed the research. You need to have done a research before you can actually write an abstract. Please note this point. Because if you've not done any research, what are you writing abstract on? Which research are you trying to convey to the audience? What are you trying to present in a conference? So if you have a uh, conference in your mind, maybe you see this beautiful conference, I say, ah, uh, this is eight conference. I would like to attend this eight conference next year. You can start preparing this year. You can start doing research or start preparing on what you want to do. I want to present that conference. So you, you have collected data, you have done your research and you can submit it to that conference for presentation. And of course, you can get the opportunity to, uh, to be invited for presentation and also for you to get scholarship to come present your abstract. So it is very important that you actually make efforts to do the right thing and also make sure that, don't just talk about data from morning to night. When you're writing an abstract in your results session, of course, give us 
uh, what you find out, tell us uh, what you find out um, from your research. But in your conclusion, you're able to give us some interesting recommendation. Just tell us some things like the interpretation of that data. Give us. Just, just tell us some data from money tonight in your abstract. What is the relevance? What is the important? Why is it important? Why is it urgent? Why what's the benefit of this research, research to the community? Why should you allow me to be able to present my conference in this con um, to be able to present my abstract in your conference? So it is very important. And also make your abstract readable. You can give it to someone to help people read and make sure that it is uh, clear, it is concise, and there's no grammatical error. So it is very important. And also make sure that your methodology is strong. Remember the general outline for abstract. If you are not given any outline, it's just four things that must be included. The, the introduction, the method, the result, and the conclusion. The introduction will give you the information regarding what is known, what is the background context, what do we know about this uh, uh, area, and what is the exact aim of this your research. The method will tell us how you do that research. Go online now, just search for a second. You see one million, uh, uh, one million abstract online. Just try to look at how people write abstract. The more you, when I started doing research, what I started doing, like I was, my, I didn't start uh, with publishing conferences and in, in, in journals. I started with writing abstract, trying to understand the rudiment of writing abstract. What is the context? What the, what are the information that you need to know when you're writing abstract? And I was able to receive a number of uh, awards to come present in conferences, both home and abroad. So when you are writing an abstract, it's not just, like I said, young people, we need to continue, we need to understand that research is something that we need to continue to uh, invest our energy in. It's not just something that you do one time and you believe that you learn it all. You need to continue to learn. You see different styles and you wonder, ah, why are they writing this way? And then you will see results. Some journals or some companies will not tell you it's results. They will call it find, uh, findings. So we call it findings. So you need to be flexible enough. And you need to understand that many ways we do things. So it's very important that you actually understand that you can start with abstract writing just to present in conferences. And through that, you are learning the half of research. Remember, before you can submit an abstract to a conference, you must have done the research. Abstract is a short um, summary of your research. Just an overview of what you have done and you must be able to stand alone. So your method will tell us what, how you have to be able to do the research. So if you check online and you look at research, you see different methodologies for surveys, for review, you see different approach, things that you can actually use in your research. So it's very important that you actually pay attention to reading abstract because you've done that your research, you know, you know, understand it. You must be able to tell us what you have done in within 150 to 200 words. It is very important. It's an important skill that you need to learn as a young researcher. Next slide, please. <sighs> so you see, like I mentioned, introduction, background, purpose, method, result. Purpose. This is just a general uh, way of structuring your uh, abstract. But remember that what is very important is that always read the instruction laid out by the uh, conference. Know what they want from you. Is it, a, is an, is it an, uh, um, a conference on mental health? Is it a conference on cancer? Read about the scope and the kind of research that they want from you. Is it just basic research? Do they want public health research? What do they want? All this read the guide. Don't just submit the abstract to a conference blindly without reading the instruction or the guides. It is very important. Next slide, please. Okay, if someone has a question, let me quickly answer that question. Um, I know for some conferences, they actually want you to submit a project-based abstract, or maybe uh, something you have done, maybe an overview of project that you have done. Something like if you look at AIDS conference, they have two types of abstract. They want research abstract, and they also want something like a project-like abstract. So the method part is still the same thing. The method for a research will, of course, look like is, uh, the one that you use in scientific uh, writing. But the method for uh, a project-based abstract would definitely be on how you actually carry out your project. What is the methodology used in carrying out your project? How do you gather people? What, what, what are you able to do that project? That one is like if you are doing a project-driven, 
maybe a community impact project, and you want to write an abstract on that. So conferences actually accept that kind of abstract on what you have done, maybe a community project. So the method is not like a scientific paper. The method will be exactly what have you done? How do you gather people? How, what approach do you use? Do you conduct maybe a lecture? Do you do a pre and post interview? Stuff like that. So you must be able to tell us how you've carried out the project, the community impact project that you've done. So it's still in a way a form of methodology that you can actually use. But for research, of course, it's different. You tell us the sample size, you tell us the study settings, study population, tell us how you get your data and how you analyze it. That's for research. But if it's a community project, community-based project, of course, you tell us how you do your, that's your methodology. How do you do the project? How was the project done? You just give us an overview in your method. So the method for a scientific abstract is different from when you are submitting a project or a community impact project uh, form of abstract. Of course, for, for community impact project, tell us how do you do the project. Just give us an overview, a snapshot, an overview of how you have done it. Is it that you get market women, you, you, you talk to them, you give them aware, uh, information regarding AMR, or you do sort of things. You give us what you have done. But if it's a scientific paper, of course, you tell us how you've got the data, how you analyze the data, what is the study population, the study design, the study settings. An overview of that, just in very short line, maybe four sentences. Remember, abstract is just an overview. But if it's a community or a project, um, uh, a community project or a, a, an impact project, abstract, something like that, just give us how you uh, carry out the project. That's that what would be your method. And of course, your results will also be like that. Your results will be able to tell us that, okay, these are the findings. And you'll be able to conclude from the project that you've carried out. But for scientific research, it's often different. Of course, it's all the same thing. How do you carry out your research? But the way you write is actually different. So now I've talked about this, um, but let me still go over it again. Introduction, remember, just one to two sentences. Remember, I've tried to just short summary of what you have done. So uh, include the research question, tell us the hey at the last sentence. Look at all the abstract. I want you to, this is how you learn how to do things and how to uh, do research, is that you make sure that anything you are learning, you are actually checking research papers to see whether it is true or not. There is no paper published in a very good journal, a journal that is peer reviewed. And you may not see the aim of the research in the introduction section of that paper. We only see the aim of our study is to do this. But for an abstract, you are going to see it at the last sentence in your introduction. Remember, introduction is just one to three or one to two sentences, giving us an overview, what is known, and where you are taking us to. What is the exact aim of your research? No, you know, you don't have words to waste. Don't waste any words. Make sure that anything you are doing has a reason to be there. For your introduction, don't be mentioning a lot of things that is not relevant. In Nigeria, in 1992, people have done something, something has happened. You don't need other story. Tell us what is the major thing. Antimicrobial resistance is actually driven by excessive or irrational use of antibiotics. The aim of my study is to assess this and this and this and this among community pharmacies in Oyo, in Ibadan, in Lagos. You don't need to start saying all sorts of nonsense that things are not actually needed. Remember, you have word limits and you have to be able to use your word uh, uh, to be able to present your work clear Lee, remember the rule of research question. Remember the rule of research topic. Your research topic needs to be clear, concise, and focused. Don't put a lot of irrational stuff. Make sure that your work is focused, clear, and uh, it makes a lot of sense. So it is very important when you are writing your introduction. Also, assume that the person is not knowledgeable. Doesn't, don't be using too much technical terms. Make sure that your work is, word is clear. Don't be using too much big words. Uh, some that some don't understand. So make sure that your introduction is clear, concise, and focused. And you're able to uh, uh, give us the background information and where, what kind of question are you trying to answer? It is very important. Next slide, please. So for the methods, remember for methods, if you are doing original research, you must be able to tell us um, your study population. You must be able to tell us how you analyze your data. You must be able to tell us. Uh, um, you, you must be able to tell us uh, the study population, whether male, uh, female, uh, their age. You must be able to give us inclusion and inclusion criteria if you are doing a review. You must be able to give us a short overview 
of your method. Of course, your method cannot be detailed here, but your method should still be able to give us a clear and concise information on what you are doing. It's very important. Don't just uh, make it because, uh, of course, you are trying to reduce work. Be able to tell us key things. Tell us how you are going to analyze your data. Tell us uh, um, your inclusion and, and social criteria. Tell us basic information about your study population. You must be able to give us those concise information. And of course, we need to tell us exactly how you actually carry out the research. Is it an interview guided? Is it a focus group discussion? Is it an in depth interview? How do you determine the sample size? You don't need to include many information, but information that you're going to include in your, in your method should, in a way, tell, give us an insight on what you have done. Is it a cross sectional survey? Is it a course, uh, case control study? Is it a review article? Is it a narrative review? Is it a scoping review? Is it a systematic review? Which database do you search? How do you get those papers for your review? So it's very important that you make sure that your method is actually uh, uh, clear. And of course, you know, you can't add much information, but any information that you're going to add to your method should be able to give us an insight on whatsoever you are doing. At least I should know that you are doing interview. You can't tell me that there's no space. That you don't, that's the major thing you are doing. You are doing a, um, uh, a focus group discussion, or you are doing an, an in-depth in interview, or you are doing a case control study, or you are writing about a case report, or you are giving us, or you are doing a review article, or you are writing a narrative review, a scoping review. You must be able to know what you are doing in your abstract, in your methods. Give us an overview, just in uh, three to four sentences. Tell us what you have done, and tell us how you analyze your data. I know it can be difficult cutting and writing an abstract. It can be really difficult. But what is very important is that you need to uh, 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 write it clearly. So someone is asking, do we need to cite? You don't cite uh, when you're writing an abstract. Unless if the, uh, and that's why I always ask you that you always check the guide. Unless if they put it in the guide that you should, you should cite. But the general consensus and the general uh, standard is that when you're writing an abstract, you don't need to cite anything. Don't give us any citation. Just write summary of what you have done. There's no need to cite do any form of citation when you're writing an abstract. But so conferences, anything can happen. That's why I always I mentioned the fact that you need to check the guide in case they actually want you to do something like that, maybe for one reason or the other. But if they don't put, if they don't give you that information, the general rule is that you don't cite when you're writing abstracts. You don't give uh, any citation when writing abstracts. So the next slide, please. So the results, the results should also be able to uh, tell us the key findings. Do they, how many people have good knowledge? How many people have bad knowledge? What are they saying? What are the key things, interesting things that you want to share that makes your work uh, uh, interesting? But remember this, remember this. Remember that you mentioned the aim of your study at the introductory section. You mean that the aim of my study, the aim of this study, is to assess the knowledge of medical students regarding COVID-19. The, the knowledge, uh, the aim of this study is to assess the knowledge of pharmacists, uh, of our medical students regarding COVID-19. That is your aim at the introductory section of your paper. I don't want to be seeing your results. You mentioned something about attitude. You don't say you want to mention attitude. That's one of the mistakes that people make when they are writing abstracts. What you don't mention that you want to do in your aim, you are mentioning that kind of thing in your result. Make sure that anything you are putting in your result is answering or is giving more information to the aim of, of your research. The aim is to assess knowledge, not to assess perception, not to assess attitude. Don't give us this information. Many people get this wrong at that level when they're writing abstract. You will be putting information that you don't have, that we don't need from you, that you don't even mention that you want to do in your aim. You don't include those information and you're adding it to your results. When you're writing an abstract, make sure that you, are, you focus your energy on expanding, on, on, on uh, 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 giving answer to your aim. Make sure that you're expanding your aim to give answers to that. Okay, maybe some of, some of the questions that you ask, you notice that um, um, maybe COVID-19 is uh, a bacteria infection. You ask that kind of question. You know, 
that kind of question is also assessing knowledge. And most of, of medical students are saying yes. You know, that, that is wrong. That means that that kind of answer, you can include it in your, in your result that most American students actually give uh, uh, agreed or give resources that uh, uh, COVID-19, uh, coronavirus disease, is a bacterial infection. That shows that they don't have good knowledge. Anything you're doing, including your result, you should be able to broaden on your aim. Your aim is to assess knowledge. You can first start by telling us that 50% of medical students have good knowledge of COVID-19 vaccine, uh, of um, coronavirus. I'm gonna give some kicky, kicky result that you see. Maybe, okay, they mentioned this, they got this clearly, they mentioned that, they're able to give you this. And some of the things that they don't get right, you can measure those key things that you find out. And you can, of course, you cannot conclude. But things that you don't mention in your head that you want to do, don't include it in your results. That's a bad way of writing. Because the idea is that, the general idea is that what you include in your head will actually determine the what, the methods. If you don't do anything that actually answer that question, you don't design a method to actually give an insight into the aim or attitude of, of medical students. And you're putting that result in your, uh, you're putting that kind of findings in your result. Where do you get the information from? Where do you get that information from? Where is the information coming from? Where is it coming from? Because in your method, you say you want to do interview to assess knowledge. What are we having in your results? What are we having attitude and perception of medical students? That's the wrong way of writing abstracts. If you write abstracts like that, it should be rejected in a very good conferences. It's very in good conferences that you submit your abstract to. So make sure that when you are writing an abstract, you make sure that your aim is clear, concise. If your aim is to, ask, to assess knowledge, attitude, perception, put it there. Don't, don't, I don't want to see in your results Fact that you're mentioning uh, uh, that you want to, uh, you're talking about your result, you're telling us about the, the attitude of medical students or the perception. If you don't include them in your aim, please learn this simple information. It's just something that is crucial. You just write abstract anyhow. You have seen that is actually guiding you. Your aim, what will determine your aim? What will determine your, uh, your method is the aim of your study. You can just do a research by just working on, ah, I want to do a research. Too. I want to do this kind of study, then just do it and you start writing. If everything has to be in order, once you have a research question that you want to answer, the next thing is to develop a method. But if you don't develop a method to assess aim and attitude or any other kind of thing that you want to assess, that you are included in your results, then how do you get those information? Where do you get them from? So please note this information. And it's very important. And when you are writing results, please give us key information on your key findings. Tell us interesting findings. Don't, go, don't hide the interesting findings. Give us the interesting findings for your research. Is it American students don't have good knowledge regarding uh, COVID-19? Tell us there, right there. 50% add a very, uh, maybe low knowledge score. Tell us all those information. Tell us interesting results that you find out. Tell us interesting association that you've done. So it's very important. Tables at times, you can include tables when you're writing abstract. It depends on the conference. So, of course, they ask you to include tables, they create the opportunity for you. Remember, always read the guide. Always read the guide. If you don't read the guide, of course, you won't understand exactly what they actually want from you. Some journal, some conferences want you to submit uh, uh, a table. So, it's very important. Please note that. Next slide, please. <clears throat> So conclusion, what do your findings mean? What is the meaning of your findings? What can you deduce from your findings? Okay, maybe based on our study, the knowledge uh, uh, level among medical students regarding COVID-19 is low, or there's a suboptimal knowledge, or there's, sub, uh, there's a very, uh, there's a good or there's a bad, just give us what is the deduction? What is the key things that you want to conclude with your study? based on what the result that you have done. Remember, what you don't find out, don't conclude on it. You see, research is just a systematic process. And it's very sweet if you understand all these rudiments. You can just conclude on what you don't find out. <laughs> you can't say, when, you're doing, when your study is focused on knowledge, you can't say, uh, you can't conclude that the attitude of the medical student is, is poor. Where do you get that information from? 
Can I see that in your results? So it's very important that you know that research is a systematic process and researchers need to actually understand that the things we do is not, we're not just writing blindly, we follow things. Remember, uh, let me say the flow chart again. Once you know the aim, of course, you know the topic of what you want to do. And your aim will determine the word, the method. Because your, your aim will actually determine how best you can answer that research question and how, what you can do to analyze, to get good information. Of course, it's your method that will determine that. It's your uh, aim that will determine your method. Your method, your aim, and your method will determine what you put in your result. You can't tell me that you are assessing knowledge and I'm seeing attitude in your findings, your results. No, you don't do that. And your results, we actually determine, we tell us more about what you are concluding on. Don't just conclude on anything. That, okay, uh, the HIV prevalence in Nigeria is low. And the aim of your study is just to assess the prevalence of HIV, uh, maybe among uh, uh, um, students of a particular university. Uh, yeah, concluded that the HIV prevalence in Nigeria is high. Is it your finding that give us that? So it is very important that you know that this thing follows um, a systematic process and a systematic order. So if I'm reviewing abstract, I used to look at those key information. Are you telling me things that you don't put in your head? Of course, reject your straight, reject. So these are the basic things that you need to know when you're writing abstract. Remember, it's a short, short summary, uh, a standalone uh, report of your work, of what you have done. It can either be a community impact project uh, abstract, maybe an abstract that you want to give an overview of what you have done, your project that you've done, or maybe a research or scientific abstract. Always read the guide when you are writing abstracts for conferences. It's very important. Next slide, please. We need to really move fast now. Next slide. So now, You've written that abstract and it's not accepted for oral presentation. Congratulations. So what is next? What are the things that you have to know? Please don't ever go beyond that time that you are given. Make sure that you're professional. To make sure that anything you are doing, you're able to communicate your uh, research um, um, clearly and also uh, uh, by not wasting people's time because there are programs that have already been laid out for conference attendees to uh, fo uh, actually follow. So now, you've had the opportunity to present a, con a conference or a presentation. When you are writing, when you are present, when you are making, you're developing your uh, PPT, your PowerPoint. Remember that the f that four key things that you submitted in your abstract needs to be there: the background, the result, the conclusion, um, 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 the results. And of course, you can have discussion, but those four things need to be there. Um, the introduction, the method, uh, the, res the result, discussion, and uh, conclusion. Now, you know, it should not look like what you have done before when you are writing the abstract. You have the opportunity to extend some information, to give us more information. But remember, those four headings are really what, what is really important. That's the context of what you are presenting. Tell us the background of what you are doing. Tell us your method. Tell us your findings. Discuss interesting findings that you, you are able to see and conclude. 40 minutes, you are, um, 10 minutes, you are done. 50 minutes, you are done. 30 minutes, you are done, depending on the kind of comments that you are uh, allotted. So it's very important. So usually the rule is that you spend one minute per slide. Oh, the presenter is gone. Okay, so remember, what, one that is very important is that when you are presenting, make sure that you don't spend too much time on a slide. Of course, I'm not following that rule because I'm teaching now. But when you are presenting a conference, make sure that you are fast and you're able to explain what you, are do, what you have done and what you, are, what you want to present in uh, a concise manner. It is really, really very important. So, when you are doing, uh, uh, when, when you are writing abstract for conference, it's also very important that when you are presenting, you make sure that the the kind of slide or the kind of color mixing that you are using to 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 share your findings, make sure that people can see what you are you, what you are projecting. Don't be using a, a yellow um, 
red fronts on the blue background. Those are the things that will be difficult for people to read. So make sure that when you are when you are actually uh, making your slide, you make sure that as long as possible that you provide the opportunity for people to see what you are presenting, and as long as possible you are clear enough, you're able to provide the information. And remember, don't forget those headings that's generally required of you. Remember, you need the words, the introduction, the method, the result, the discussion, conclusion. You just need to add more information. Look, I can just go back a bit. So now you can use something like this. You can use something like this. You can see. You can use maybe a yellow uh, kind of a book background. You can use something like this. And that's next slide. You can use something like this. So that anyone can see. I know everyone can see this clearly. Next slide. You can use something like this. And you can see the minimum points, the PowerPoint, the general, I find too much irrelevant uh, things that are not actually, that will not give you information. That will not give you the accurate information of what is needed. So, next slide. This is bad. Don't do this. <laughs> no one will be able to see what you are doing if you are using the, the, the big conference. As you are looking at it, you can see that it's difficult for you to see uh, uh, what is on the slide. So make sure that you use coloring or you, you mix colors such a way that people will see what you are presenting and they will appreciate your conference, uh, your, your presentation. Because at the end of the, uh, the presentation, people will say uh, they like your slide. They like how you were able to communicate and how you to share your slide and how you're able to uh, uh, present yourself. Don't use the kind of front when you are presenting the conference. This is too uh, bad, and you can't. You won't be able to see. And they won't be able to see uh, what we are uh, uh, talking about. So it's very important that you know this. Next slide. This is also bad. Don't do things like this. <laughs> don't do th don't color slide like this. See like everything modeled up. Everything is not clear. Yeah, you even putting images everywhere. How can I able to see what you've done? So when you are presenting the conflict, make sure that whatever you are writing, anything you've done is clear and it's, uh, anyone can see it, no matter where they are sitting in the hall. Next slide. So um, when you are presenting, uh, of course, I always follow, another thing that I didn't mention is that for presentation, they always give guidelines. If you are doing poster presentation or you are doing oral presentation, there's usually guidelines on how they want you to uh, uh, structure uh, uh, your slide or now they want to actually structure your uh, uh, your poster. So it's also very important they always read that guideline because where you have your poster or where you actually, where you pro uh, project your uh, work, they must have considered all those things before they develop or they come up with guidelines. So make sure that you follow all this. I make sure no more than seven lines per slide. That's the general rule. No more, than, more, no more than seven words per line. So make sure that you also follow the rules. Are, these are not the general rules of presenting, but make sure that you do things such a way that if you are presenting, you make sure that you've done your best, uh, you try your best to make sure that everything you are presenting is clear and you've used the right approach laid out by the organizer. Always, once you are, they give you the opportunity to present the conference, they will send you the information on how they wanted to structure your slide and now they want you to actually uh, present what uh, anything you are doing, if it's a poster or if it is uh, an oral presentation. Next slide. So, another thing is that uh, use title or heading area or draw a line under title. And that's why I need to do this. But if possible, if you think that it is looking uh, nice, of course, you can leave it. But make sure the best thing is that just make sure that anything you are doing, you are actually considering your words, your audience, people that will read your work, people that will look at your slide when you are presenting. It is very important. Use bullets if possible. When you want to lay out, uh, when you want to tell us uh, our information or you, or you tell us point about something, use bullet points. You can use numbering methods. So it's very important that you also know that. Next slide.
So you can use number, you can use points, also kind of so those kind of just make sure that your slide is organized. And if you are presenting, anyone will be able to follow uh anything you are saying. So you can number the points or you can use bullets. Next slide. Of course, when you are presenting, look for a way to keep your audience awake. Make sure that you crack some joke or you don't not do a specific joke. Don't uh, joke like Miss Smith and don't do something like that. <laughs> make sure that if you want to joke or you want to mention something, make sure that you just joke so the way that you just awake people. And also you can do energizer if you are bold enough to do that. Of course you can. So make sure that you are also keep your audience awake. You can do something uh, innovative to make sure that they are following what you are saying. So another thing is that one of the things that you have to actually do is that when you are presenting a conference, one thing is that in your audience, in your audience, editors will be there. If it's a very standard conference, you will see top researchers. And this can also provide the opportunity for you to be able to network after your presentation and get your work published. So remember, abstract is not the end. Make efforts to publish your findings in peer review uh, journals. Next slide. So use colors. That is, you play with color. You may use colors that will make your slide look attractive. Like I said, make sure uh, your slide attractive, and also don't make it too boring. And don't use background. Don't use red uh, background on um, red lettering on, on blue background. Make sure that anything you are doing is clear and, of course, you're able to put that to as key information. Maybe you want to mention something, you can use color or stuff like that. You can underline and um, uh, just like what you're seeing on the slide. Next slide. So this, I know you probably can't make out what, what's on this slide. Don't, don't ever say that because you're doing like, yeah, they want to present the, 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 the slide. Of course, we should not be seeing things like that. But that means that you've not done your due diligence to make sure that also whenever you are, uh, you are presenting that conference, you make sure that you, you check and uh, see that it's actually follow the standard and also it makes sense to uh, the audience. So make sure that you don't mention stuff like that. So many times that you, want, you need to have done your due diligence to make sure that your slide is perfect that day. Next slide. I apologize for the complexity of this of this slide. Don't say that. Why will you say that? Even though it is complex, why not make it simple? Why not make it simple? <laughs> you know it's complex. Why not make it simple? Why not summarize it to make sure that your audience can understand what you are saying? Next slide. Um, next point. Ignore the details of this slide. I just want to focus on. Why do you say you want to ignore details? Why, do, why can't you remove it? <laughs> that shows, that this, all these questions that someone is not prepared. You are not prepared enough to, to present that conference. And they, you remember they give you travel grants to come and present. Then of course, you need to actually uh, blow your mind and also share your science in a way that it is clear and it's engaging. So don't ever say that. Make sure that you remove any details that you know is, is irrelevant. Next point. So uh, slide construction, title for every slide, yes. Don't just make a, 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 one of your slides, just, just, just don't make it open. Always put title in every slide so that people can follow when you have moved from method to result, or when you have moved from result to discussion, or when you have moved from discussion to, uh, uh, to conclusion. So you guys have to use phrases, somewhere to do some edits. But make sure that it's clear enough that people can actually uh, uh, read them. So what that you can also try to avoid when you're presenting that, you know, you're not teaching. There's no need to add footnotes. Footnotes is not, is distracting the way. And the way that you want to add, make sure that everything is on your slide. Make sure that everything is on your slide. There's no need to be putting all things. Make sure that everything is on your slide. Your slide, anyone can look at it and at least understand 
what you are presenting and what you are sharing with them. So common abstraction is okay, but things that you know that people don't know or is not common in your feed, don't use that kind of abbreviation. You can use something like WHO. Everyone knows WHO, so you can use something like that. But don't start using maybe terms that people don't know or people that have many meaning. Like CHF, that can be, um, uh, CHF, uh, PTS, M, stuff like that, LV, MI. I think you need to expand, but I think if you know your audience, that's another thing. You need to know your audience to know whether they actually understand this. If you use PTS, some people know like this patient that you're talking about. If you use some aviation, some people know like if you're using MI, so they know what they're talking about. So that you are using LC, they know what you're talking about. But some people might not know. So it's best to avoid some things that you know that your audience will not know. So it's best to actually understand what your audience know and the kind of people that you are speaking to. Read your audience. Are they scientists? Are they well, who are they? So you need to be able to understand uh, those things, to be able to have an insight on how best you can actually uh, uh, use abbreviations if needed. Next slide. Tables. You might need to include tables if there's uh, a need for that. But make sure that your table has a title. And in a way, you make it concise as much as possible. Don't make it look like if you are using a table and the table is too big that no one can read what you are doing or no one understands what, uh, what exactly you are trying to do. So it's really very important that when you are actually making tables, Make sure that they are uh, concise as much as possible and they are clear and anyone can look at them and at least have an insight on what you are talking about. Next slide. So look at this table. You can see, you can see the odd ratio, you can see the confidence interval for different uh, parameters. So anyone looking at this can easily understand what you're talking about is this is not difficult. You can see that the odd ratio is 1.26 for factor V, maybe day for MI. You can see protrobin mut uh, mutation and MI. You can see 0 0.89. And you can see the, the odd ratio is 0 0.89. You can see this uh, confidence in Taba to be 0 0.59 to 1.35. So this is clear. Anybody can see this. It's not complex. So they said that nobody can, uh, they won't understand what you're talking about. So don't make sure that I don't model everything up. You are just modeling OR with CN. No, make sure that everything is distinct and uh, clear. Next slide. You can use bar graph if you need to use it to be able to do some, uh, um, to compare results across group. So you can decide to use bar graphs. So all these things, it depends on the need. You might not actually need them in your own presentation, but look at the best way so actually use uh, data visualization for you to be able to communicate your science to your audience. At times, just using table, just using chat might actually do the talking rather than using words for money tonight. So look at what is best for you, the kind of uh, visualization tool, the kind of visualization tool that you want to use. And um, that would actually determine how, uh, what you really want to do and the kind of approach and the kind of how you will structure it. Remember, being concise, clear is the watchword. Next slide. So you can see this. This is clear. And you can see the keys below. So you can see the color. I want to actually represent. You can see the, that this is the odd ratio. And you can see the, both the X and Y axis. Next slide. Graphs, you might need to use pie, uh, uh, graphs or pie chart for uh, your presentation. So like I said, it depends on what you're presenting on. But remember the watchword, clear, focus, and concise. Next slide. So you can see something like this. Of course, this is not still too clear, but if you're actually using, uh, conference on i think this will actually make a lot of sense you will see it clearly and of course you can also uh, make sure that you uh, use the best uh, uh, method when you are trying to communicate or visualize your data to uh, your audience so audience next slide 
see and no one see this. Um, you can see the percentages, everything is there. No, it's not, it's not easy for you to put this uh things inside the uh inside the chart. So you can look for a way to use an arrow to explain what you have done or what is inside it outside. Next slide. So you can also decide to use the line graph. Maybe that's the best way you can communicate your findings. So, but, so there's some data that the best way, you don't need to start mentioning a lot of things. You can use table, you can use graph. You can use line graph. You can use line graph to communicate, to see how the trend, how things are actually moving. So that's why it's very important as young researcher, you also need to build capacity when it comes to uh, data analysis, data science, data visualization. It's a very important skill that 21st century uh, uh, scientists need to build capacity in. So you need to learn how to uh, visualize data, how to analyze data, how to use SQL, SQL how to use Python, how to use R, how to use uh, Stata, how to use SPSS, all this information. Like I just tell people, they are on YouTube. You can also learn this on YouTube. You can take online courses to build capacity in all these things. So that's another thing that you should start thinking of as a young researcher to make sure that you build capacity in that area. So you can use line graph to communicate anything you are doing. Maybe you want to share your results and you believe that the best way to be able to share this in an oral interview is to use a line graph. Next slide. So you can see something like this. Um, <clears throat> you can see uh, the, the line graph. So it might be that that must be, be useful for your own work. Does have to construct to develop something like that instead of talking from morning to night or using tables or using things that will not be clear to your audience? You can decide to use line graph and that does the work. So that's why it's very important to learn how, how to visualize your data and make sure that it looks in a presentable way when you are doing oral presentation. Next slide. So is this good? No. Don't use something like this when you are presenting, when you, especially when you are presenting, unless if it's going to be really clear to the audience. Using this kind of thing is not uh, advised. Uh, you don't advise people to do this kind of uh, chat when you are presenting the conference. No one will see what they are talking about. Next slide. You see, it's too small. So it's too small. You, you don't use stuff like this. So make sure that you use things that people will see. So, type two. Like I said, I mentioned that then again, that make sure your, your type two is not boring, it's interesting. So if I, if I hear your title, you're able to jump on, oh, wow, I want to, to listen to this person. I want to attend this person's session. Oh, this is an interesting topic. I'll be willing to learn about this. Your topic should be able to steer people's interest and make sure that they really want to actually listen to what you want to present in the conference. It's very important. So ideally, it should encourage the reader to be interested enough to want to see more. It should not lead them to any of the following reaction. Oh, not again. You presented this one million times. <laughs> so you should not give an that impression. Oh, I don't believe this. This is incorrect. What is this? How boring. This is boring. Oh, stuff like that. So make sure that the title don't bring those reactions. Make sure that it looks attractive enough for you to uh, present or for you to submit that to your conference. Now make sure that it's adding to body of knowledge. It's very important. Don't let it ask you, I don't believe this, or how boring, or not again. Next slide. So the title should be able to tell us what you have done. And should be able to give us information on anything you are doing. Is it a clinical trial? Is it a crushing survey? Is it a review? Is it a narrative review? Is it a systematic review? Is it a descriptive review? Is it a scope review? Is it a crushing study? Is it a case court, uh, case control study? Is it a crushing survey? I should be able to have a sign or in a way be able to get an understanding of what you have done. Or if you have not getting that from the study, because some people said they don't want to include whether it's a crushing survey in their title. You can also make time or make effort to ensure that if you are uh, writing your uh, title or the data of your research, make sure that it is interesting 
and attractive enough for people to want to listen to it. And be sure that the key information are there. Don't be missing key information when you should include some information. You are not including them. Make sure that you include those key information. The things that you know that, you no, know, I used to tell people that when you are trying to come up with the title for your research, understand the fact that um, your work, use keywords that will be searchable by search engines. And then if you are doing writing research or you are giving title for your study, make sure that you include keywords that if I want to search for a paper in the future, you sh your people should be able to come up with a search engine. So you need to use keywords that are actually relevant to what you have done. Don't include the relevant title or things that are not even interesting. Make sure that you are able to give us a concise, clear, and meaningful uh, uh, title for your research. Next slide. So title, at times, you know, some researchers, uh, it depends on the level, but your researcher is often, they often discourage us to not state our title in, in this kind of uh, uh, um, way. Antibiotic X improves survival in neutropenia sepsis. Wow, that's fantastic. You're already talking like a professor already. You have been, you know, you are still presenting in the conference. Your work has not been peer reviewed. So you should try as as possible to ensure that when you are presenting, you don't sound like you're bragging with your findings or, or in a way. But some people will interpret it that way. Uh, antibiotic X improves survival in neutropenia sepsis. Well, it sounds cool, but in a way, it looks like you're bragging. If you're not a professor, you're not an authority yet, it's better to tone it down or say it in another way. Because you're making an assertion already. You're making it, you're making it like a fact. I remember it is possible that your work might not have been peer reviewed. No one has reviewed your work, it's just abstract presentation. So make sure that you tone down your title that will not look like at least you are bragging with your findings. Next slide. So when you are stating um, um, your results, Make highlight what is new about your, uh, your study, especially if the population or intervention has been studied before. Can reader, can interest the reader? I mean, you're still talking about your title in a way. And, and the reviewer, to be able to interest anyone that is reading or anyone that you are presenting to, key points is to be uh, objective, no overstate. Like the one we mentioned earlier uh, regarding you saying a, uh, an antibiotic is useful in, um, in neutropenia uh, uh, sepsis. Is too big in a way. You are making a very strong uh, subjective fact because your work has not been peer, peer reviewed. We can't say it is subjective, even though you have the research data. Tone it down. Unless if you are a top professor or a big professor that will really want to uh, uh, show what they have done, or if your work has been published already, that means that it has undergo peer review. And of course, you can actually state your results in that manner, or, your, or your, you can state your title. Uh, in that way. Next slide. So, like I said, don't appear to be too assertive when you are constructing your work. See, pros and pros of setting the result like, like this. B52 genotype reduces survival, survival in disease X. That looks, you are too certain. You are certain assertive of what you are saying. It seems like you are bragging. bragging. But of course, Tony that you can see something like an objective effect of B52 genotype on survivor in disease S. You've told down that title. Rather than saying B52 genot uh, genotype reduces survivor in the, you are making it like a fact. And remember, your work might, might not, they might not peer review your work before you present that conference by science, by the normal scientific peer review process. But if the work has been, has been peer review, and it does not does it publish already, and you want to share it in a conference, of course, you can use that kind of title. So don't be too certain, don't assertive. You can use to that pull it down by saying the effect of B52 genotype or survivor in disease X. That's better. So next slide.
Next slide. So I've mentioned both of these things before. Um, so remember when you're coming with the title, are the title and research question closely related? Yes, this is another thing. Your research question and in your introduction, the aim of, the aim of your study should not be different from your title. Don't say you want to do A in your head and you are including another thing as well. You are adding another thing as your title. Remember, your research question actually determines your title. What you're not doing, don't include it in your uh, in your head. Or uh, what's your research question? Is the title objective in tone? Does it start or is it subjective? Make sure that your title is objective in tone and doesn't sound like you are actually bragging. A special features of the study mentioned is it among women, is it um, among elderly, is it among medical students, is it among pharmacists, is it among medical doctors, is it among, uh, among uh, surgeons? You should be able to give us uh, all these key things in your title and make sure your title contains what keywords and at the same time it is interesting. Next slide. What not to do from the world of journalism? I know many, many of us are actually guilty of this. Next slide. <laughs> I don't know many people do this a lot. Just go and look for one newspaper and cut it. <laughs> cut it and paste it on your slides. It's actually not a best practice. It's not um, the right way of doing things. Unless if you cut out that part or you will refer people to read it, that's even much more better. Like, Chris, like, what is the relevance of this? in your presentation. So we all are actually guilty of this, but actually it's not one of the best practice of actually cutting something from newspaper. You don't cite who special that statement. It's not scientific enough. It's just something published in newspaper and it's not giving me information about anything you're afraid of. Unless if you are a formal graduate, you can, but formally, in a formal conference, you should have first things like this. Instead, you can refer people to read it or you can actually copy out the statement that is relevant to your presentation or the title and share it. Next slide, you see more stuff like this. See these two. Next slide. Next slide, what's the importance of this? Next slide. Why not cut this out? Instead of saying things like that, next slide. Next slide. This is often not allowed. Next slide. So if you can avoid things like this, best avoid it. Why are you copying? Why are you studying this newspaper? Why are you doing that? So it's best to actually remove stuff like this from your files. If you want to do anything like this, you can refer people to read it or you can quote statements from uh, the newspaper. Just cite the information. Next slide. Next. <laughs> Next. So, um, I've actually um, talked a lot of things, mentioned a lot of things about abstract writing, but normal, you just have, 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 have some etiquette, uh, increase some etiquette while uh, giving your presentation. So, of course, have your slide up and uh, thank the moderator. Now, like maybe thank you, Dr. Jones, Dr. These ladies and gentlemen, or you can say Dr. Jones, Dr. Miller, ladies and gentlemen, stuff like that. After your introduction and you're coming on stage, next is to appreciate the audience, or, or if they give you grants, you can appreciate them for giving you the support to be able to present. And of course, if, it's, if that's your first presentation, you can say that too. But make sure that you have confidence, you put out your confidence, you are the one that research. That's how you actually get confidence when you're going to present in the conference. See, it's like you are the one that understand that research, you are the one that perform, you are the one that conduct, you conducted the study. So of course, you are the authority in what you are presenting. See yourself like that and speak with a lot of authority and speak with confidence. But that means that you must have practice and you understand what you have done. And if you are also presenting, if, if possible, you can always add limitation because no research is 100% perfect. You might need to add limitation. This is very important. 
Miss Lyon. Be sure to use the same words in your talk as are on the slide. Yes, of course. So that people will not be lost. Make sure that if, if it's possible, you can read your slide and just say one of two things so, so that people can understand what you have done. But I think it's not a best practice to it shows that you don't have good understanding of what you are doing. But if you notice that you lose your confidence, you can just read your slide and go and see. But of course, the best thing is to make sure that you prepare adequately and you present to someone before that day. So make sure that you uh, uh, say the same thing as what is on your slide, and you're adding more information. Hello, can you hear me, please? Yes, I can hear you now. Yeah, sorry, please, a call entered. That's why. So, uh, be sure you use the same words in your talk as on your, on your slide. I thought you need to add more information, but don't make the audience confused about what they are talking about. So, it's very important that you also note that. Next slide, please. So for instance, okay, look at this. All solid deaths outside are uh, OXP2. That's what you have in your slide. You can say all solid deaths uh, occur outside the hospital. But if you are saying something like you are including medical center and not hospital, medical center could be anything. We don't know whether it's maybe a normal public health care center or maybe a clinic or something. You don't make them get uh, lost with whatsoever you are saying. Next, uh, next slide. So at times, by to pause slightly as I'm moving from one slide to another. So you have the control. You are the lead. You are the one uh, leading the discussion. You are the authority. You are the one that understands what you have done. You are the one that is spent up to 2,000 or 3,000 USD to bring you over from Africa to come and present. So <laughs> you are the authority to get anything you are presenting. So of course, make sure that you are, are in control Indicate in your written test where you will transition. Of course, can do that. Of course, or you can actually pause and move on to the next uh, thing that you want to talk about. Next slide. So slide transition is also very good. Don't bring a discussion before result. Uh, don't bring a conclusion before result. Make sure that you are transiting in, in, in the right way. So if you have more, than, more, if you have more data in your presentation than you showed in the abstract, Make a brief mention. Yes. Hey, at times I'm obviously cases like that. That's why I always recommend that if you can use chat to summarize uh, your results, that's the best thing. It makes your work more presentable and, uh, and, and clear at the same time. So learn how to visualize data and how to use data visualization to communicate uh, uh, your data and your findings to the audience. Next slide. Next slide, talk about this a lot. Just continue to go in. So, next slide. So, like I said, practice, um, like precaution that you have to hold 
please note this is very, very important that when you are presenting the conference, don't be the only one that, don't be the only person that actually has that slide. You can email the slide to yourself, you can send it to a friend, or you can send it to the organizers. So just in case anything happened that day, or you might need to use someone's laptop. So and there's issue or so you know, you're not the only one that has that slide with you. It might be on your email or your, it can also be on the flash drive. So that to avoid any, any story that touch, maybe in case of any uh, uh, technical issues. So be sure someone else has a slide. At the end of the talk, be sure you, your slides are loaded. Check in the room of the talk to be sure everything is ready. You can also, what that, one thing that you can also do is that make sure that you actually get to the venue uh, early. Make sure that you are there before anyone. Uh, make sure you, before the product uh, actually starts, you're already there, you see the, uh, how the seat are actually arranged. And of course, that will actually give you confidence and also make it possible for you to be able to share your size. As, as your size. And at the same time, you'll be able to uh, uh, reach the room before you start your presentation. And be sure that you also number your slide. I don't think whether I added anything like that, but number your slide, that makes it possible. Don't look at my own slide. When you're presenting the conference, number your slide because you can actually ask you questions based on your slide. You can say, okay, go back to slide this and this. I have this question for you. Next slide. Next slide. Oh, this, um... So same thing with poster. Make sure that you always follow the rules that they want from you. Uh, when, you are to, when, when you receive the acceptance by the conference, make sure that you follow the size. If they tell you it's three to four feet, follow it. If they tell you they want a deduction method, result conclusion, follow that. Use chart, make sure that everything is clear, everything is organized. You can go online and download templates that suit the uh, conference style. So it's very important that you make effort to follow the format laid out by the conference on the, uh, 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 organizers. Next slide. So that's general, don't always read for the test. Show that you have an understanding of what is there. You can just look at your slides, you have an insight of what you want to talk about, then continue talking. But if you know that you are losing the words, read. Or you get your confidence back, something like that. Just make sure that how you are able to do the transition line when you are uh, doing your presentation. Develop an outline. You can have an outline with you, maybe a short book or a short paper, but now you want to do the flow uh, based on what you have on your slide. Tell what you'll be covering. I like your objective. It's very important. What are you going to talk about? Tell us before you start presentation. Look at the audience. Don't look down like throughout the whole presentation. Look at the audience. Look at them in your eyes. Look at someone that is nodding his head, that is feeling you in a way, that is actually following whatever you are talking about. So make sure that you look at that person in the hall. You will see one person like that. That will be giving you that ginger to continue to talk, to continue to present whatsoever. whatsoever you are trying to uh, share with the audience. So make sure that you are uh, actually uh, look at that person. That person will be your audience and make sure that you, you actually uh, 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 look at that person among the uh, audience. Last slide, uh, next slide, please. So plan how to cover your content, break up session, stop and synthesize, never go over time, encourage questions, Humor can be good in good taste. Don't go and make an expressive joke with the head of, of the director. <laughs> or go and make an expressive joke with something. Just be careful. You can make a joke. Or you can do something that will actually make them laugh. But of course, remember that you are in a formal gathering and make sure that you present uh, uh, your work with confidence. Show that you understand the science of whatsoever uh, I think you are sharing with the audience. It is really, really important that you hone the audience. You are, the, you are in charge. You are in control for that 10 to 15 minutes of your presentation. Make sure that you are calm. Allocate, uh, look at someone in the audience that is feeling you, that you maybe you have know this are ahead in uh, agreement. So whatever you are saying, use that person as a motivation. Look at that person. Look at the audience. Make sure that you, you actually are, you are in control and make sure that you prepare. Your first presentation might not be so nice, 
But of course, if you don't do it, if you don't put yourself out, of course, you won't get better. So it's not always um, the way you actually expect it to be. But what is very important is that you continue to uh, learn, continue to build capacity, and you continue to submit your abstract to conferences. And of course, you can win grant and scholarship. It's just as simple as what I've explained. Look for a very good title, interesting topic that, we, that you know that we interest the audience. Write your abstract in a clear way. Follow the guidelines laid out by the conference. And also make sure that you follow the sign. What should be your method should be there. What should be your results should be there. Your abstract should be able to stand alone. You can't tell me that you're in your, in your home that you want to assess knowledge. You want to assess knowledge in your aim. And your results, I'm not seeing anything like knowledge. Make sure that everything you are doing is systematic, is clear, and your work can stand alone. And look for interesting areas that is hot or really interesting in your field of interest and write an abstract on it. Remember, a research comes before uh, uh, an abstract. Because I've done a study, maybe a review or something, before you actually write your uh, uh, abstract. So it's something that you can get better with time. The more you do all these things, the more you learn how to write, and the more you build capacity in research. So uh, thank you, everyone. Um, I'm going to wake up questions now. Uh, and thank you for following. Thank you very much, Francis Yusuf. It has been a very wonderful session. I have learned a whole lot about writing abstract, about presentation, about conferences. Um, and I'm sure I speak for many other people. Yeah. And please, if you have any question, you can unmute yourself and and ask the question, or you can type it in the chat box. Thank you. I think I can see some questions already. So you mentioned some areas we should build capacity on age data science. I want to know uh, those areas. Uh, of course, as a researcher, the first thing that you have to identify is your area of interest. Because this is just general about research. Because uh, you guys see me writing abstracts for a conference on, uh, on uh, uh, let, let's say, environmental science. Or you see me writing abstracts on things that are not in my area of interest. I have areas that I'm interested in. And those are the kind of conferences I submit my abstract to. So if I say you should build capacity, of course, you need to build capacity in areas that you're interested in. It might be that you're interested in public health research, you're interested in global health research, you're interested in biomedical research, you're interested in clinical trials, you're interested in doing meta-analysis, you're interested in systematic reviews. So all these areas, you have many areas that you can build capacity as a young researcher. But one thing that is very important is that identify that area. Are you interested in tuberculosis? Are you interested in infectious disease? Are you interested in pandemic preparedness? Are you interested in HIV research? Are you interested in mental health research? Are you interested in cancer research? And of course, building capacity as a researcher also cut across you learning how to analyze data. So that's why data science, um, data science, learning how to visualize data, data visualization, building capacity in these areas is really very important as a young researcher. Because what you're working with and what you're generating as a researcher is purely data. You are generating data and you are analyzing those data to give us information that we actually make impact. That's what you are doing. It's not computer that is doing that nowadays. It's just computer that I say, it's something that I said data and give us information that we used to say. What we are, is that what computer is? But scientists are doing that now. We get data, you analyze it with the knowledge of data science or data analysis or data visualization that you have. That as a young researcher, you need to learn how to use R, it's not late, how to use Python, how to use SQL, how to use Strata, how to use Strata, how to use SPSS for your data analysis. So you can invest in all these things to learn how to manage data, ma data management. All these are crucial skills that you need to have as a young researcher. And all these resources are available online. Go on Google type data science, you see a lot of information coming up. So you need to actually identify area of interest grow in um, how to analyze your data because it's always very good 
as a researcher, as a researcher, if you understand how to analyze data yourself, you don't need to rely on someone. So it's something that you can learn. You can learn data analysis. And that will be useful for you throughout your career as a, uh, as a researcher. So there are many areas you can build capacity in. Of course, you'll be the one that will identify what interests you and what you really want to learn. Which area is the lab research that you're interested in? Are you interested in uh, clinical trials? Are you interested in uh, clinical research? So you will be able to point out the areas where you want to build capacity in. So how do you get to submit abstract? I mean, as a student, how to get to one? Of course, there are calls. Like I used to tell people that you can't tell me that you're interested in HIV research and you don't know what AIDS conference, International AIDS Conference is. You don't know International AIDS Society. Please let's talk about the best use of internet. There are many conferences only from time to time when you have the opportunity to submit your abstract and present. Of course, if your area of interest is antimicrobial resistance, you should know conferences that are related to that. If you're interested in mental health, you should travel as possible to Google conferences in, in that are related to mental health, conferences in HIV research, conferences in public health, conferences in global health, conferences in data science. There are many conferences like that, and they call for abstract, for people to come and share their science. So if you're interested in an area, of course, you'll be able to see. Just type on Google, list of international AIDS conferences. You will see many conferences coming up around the world. And you can see those ones that are legit, those ones that are actually fake. You can be able to see previous speakers. You can, go, you can Google them more to learn about what, what that conference is all about. So you have area of interest. You can always uh, make effort to actually learn more about conferences in those areas of interest that you are. Is it cancer? Is it tuberculosis? There are conferences on just tuberculosis. Google it. There's something called International Conference on Tuberculosis or by Tuberculosis Union of, uh, uh, and WHO. So there are many, are you interested in, in nicotine? There's no forum on nicotine. Are you interested in tobacco? There are many conferences on that. So if you just Google, you see conferences and you know the time each year. So conferences are twice, um, uh, biannually, why right? so conferences of course maybe just um, um, maybe every two, two years or something like that. So conference, depending on that conference, I mean, otherwise the conference are, are annually. So you know that all this information and you make use of them and you know that it's not a must that if you hear about a conference today that you have to apply. It's not a must. You can actually wait till when um, you know that, okay, uh, okay, ah, this comment, I'm tired this is this comment for next year. There's no need to rush, you can take your time to strategize and prepare towards submitting your abstract to that conference. Remember, you need to have done a research to submit an abstract to a conference. Abstract is a standing note summary of your research work. It's not just something that you just write from anywhere, or just falsify data. No, you must have done the study. So there are many okay. conferences that you, as students, they don't, there's no stereotype of, okay, it's only professor that can submit. A student can submit to any conference. Once you have done a proper work, a proper research, and it makes a lot of sense, submit it to that conference. They won't see, they won't ask whether you're excited or not. It's not important to them. It's your science that is important to them. And you must be able to package it clearly uh, uh, and in, in a proper way. So someone asked again that, please can narrative review, yes. You can submit a review to a conference. You can do a review, a scopy review, systematic review, narrative review. You can do all kind of review, but make sure that your review is relevant and is added to the body of knowledge. It's very, very important. There's some, there's some review that really is not needed. So do reviews on topics that is actually relevant and very important that you think that is going to advance knowledge and people will be interested in it. So there's no rule that you cannot submit abstract to a conference, a review. You can submit the narrative review, you can submit scoping review, you can submit literature review, you can submit descriptive review, you can submit systematic review. You can submit all sorts of reviews, but make sure that it's important, it's relevant, and it's up to date. So I did look at conferences each within a country. Of course, uh, there are conferences that all, I attended the first international last Viva conference in Abuja in 2020, a fully funded with a, a uh, um, play ticket hotel and uh, stipends. So you, the local, conf uh, the local conference, that you always have to check. That conference was uh, organized by NCDC. 
in 2020, in 2019, is the first general conference on, on NASA fever. So there are many conferences that are local conferences that you can attend. We have FAMSA. I know there is FAMSA. No, that is, looks regional in a way. Um, there is all these medical students uh, association. You have the conferences that they, at times they call for abstract. You can go there, you can present. It's a local conference. You can ask conference within your country, maybe a conference organized maybe by a society. A conference organized by maybe the Nigeria Medical uh, Society or, 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 or association. That kind of conference, if they call for abstract, you can submit your research to them. So there are local conferences where you can actually present. It's not every time that it's international. You can even start from local. You can start from local conferences, then you can step up your game to start applying for international conferences. So, yeah, that is that. Thank you very much for taking our time to answer these questions. Thank you so much for your time. So I really appreciate it. And You're welcome. I believe I speak for everyone. Thank you so much. At least now my abstract writing skills has improved. I I will do well to put this to good use. Thank you so much, Thomas. You're welcome. And everybody, thank you for your time. Thank you, our chairperson. Thank you all so much for staying with us. And tomorrow, we will be having two sessions. So do well to, this are going to be the last sessions for our research training. Thank you very much, everyone. I can now leave the meeting. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining. Please don't forget our session tomorrow. We'll be having our final sessions tomorrow. We'll be having two sessions together. We'll be looking at ethics and then how to begin as a medical student. Thank you very much, everyone, for coming. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining us. We'll be expecting you all tomorrow bright and early. And we we'll expect the large turnout for tomorrow, seeing as it's going to be our final session. Um, let me call quickly on the chairperson so that he will say a few words while we close the session as everyone is leaving. Uh, thank you very much. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Oh, all right. So I want to thank um, Thomas Yusuf for the awesome session. He's always been supporting us and he's one of the main people that facilitated our collaboration with uh, JHL. So we could have um, uh, trainers from JHL to train us in this research. And I, also, I want to implore everyone to step up our games and try to apply for stuff. So we should we don't have to limit ourselves to uh, local conferences after but uh, because what you consider to be local might is international to some people. Like if you are going for a conference from Nigeria to Rwanda, someone in Rwanda might consider it to be a local conference. Why you consider it international? So and then it does not mean we can get accepted to international conference even when it's not presented for. So you try to aim higher and try to apply and submit our tracks. As long as you follow all the steps, our methodology and everything is perfect. And then we try to review it with uh, people that are experts. Uh, at ABC, so has always been reviewing my half facts and I'm always grateful for that. So we should always try to do that and we get our uh, half fact accepted and presented. Mm. And also always try to publish the full paper in the manuscript. I want to implore us to be, to, to be punctual tomorrow for the program for tomorrow. So to be our final section. I see all the seats in the world.